I made a very successful short film called They're oh. Made Out of Meat. They're made out of meat. It's about two aliens that meet in a diner late at night. To what? Discuss what? To discuss what they've discovered about humans. And the main conclusion is that they're made out of meat. And the film's got about 2 million views on YouTube. And Wait, uh, the, 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 the film was out on YouTube? It's on YouTube. It's got about 2 million views. You know, you're not the only person that can rack up the views. Blue, Blue Band should. Films? No, it's just called They're Made Out of Meat. Is it from Blue Band Films? No, it's from me. <laughs> no, but I mean, is it that? No. Go, go back. They're Made Out of Meat. T-H-E-Y apostrophe. Uh, it's the top one there. Top one there. That, that, this that one? one there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's been uploaded in multiple. That's my account, I think. So that's probably the best quality version of it. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I have to so, watch that. The short film. Let me add it to my watch later. Do it's I been 30 to? film festivals, won a bunch of awards. It's got, you know, it, it became big because we, we got um, that guy, for example, he was in The Wire, the TV show okay. The Wire. Oh. And uh, the guy in the red there, he was in lots of, uh, he's in lots of big movies. And the guy well, in the black suit, he uh, a famous American comedian. Right. Did you, did you, did you shoot that before? Oh yeah, I know this guy. Did you did you do that before film school or after? No, it was my final project oh. in film school. But wow, what, what happened is that uh, you know you're supposed to go make a final film for film school, and mm -hmm. just my film kind of grew out of proportion because I managed to get this big actor involved in it. And once I got this big actor involved in it, then lots of other people wanted to get involved with it, and it turned into this kind of megalomania short film and uh yeah it was a great experience and but the, it's strange that what i didn't know, see i i adapted this little short story when I, I i didn't know that the short story was kind of a famous short story oh. and, uh, and so and so because of that to this day the film gets watched like you know an awful lot and even to this day it, it still gets invited into film festivals and so that's great thing is, the funny thing is it's like i made that film whatever went 16 years ago or 15 years ago and I haven't made a film since and so they they, they say you're only Why? as good as, they well they say you're only as good as your last films <laughs> so I decided to leave it at that you know wow why like, you should do more I mean I I'm gonna watch I, it I, I'm saying I'm telling you should do more without seeing the first one but I know people you know. always say people always say that apparently though if anybody's watching and they're interested in watching my film apparently my film is better if you uh, smoke something you know, illicit beforehand. Apparently, that improves. Oh, yeah. So, what about quality. us non-smokers? Yeah, well, that's that, that that that's what I learned in the comments below. It's just the comments below my film were always like, "Oh my god, I smoked a joint last night and I watched this film and it's amazing." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you get out of film school in in uh, in New York. Yeah, that was about 2004, I guess. So how long how long have you been how long did you did you live in the I, black, I, I black, black free saying good idea, Steph, Stefan? Oh, thank you. Um I lived in uh, I lived in New York for just a year of the film school and then I moved back to Ireland with this ambition to make like a, a feature film and I had this great idea for a true story um, and I spent a lot of time writing it but it turns out it's a lot it's very difficult to make a movie <laughs> I can't a, imagine. A, a short film is one thing but a feature film is uh, very tricky um, and uh, but it was a great idea it was a uh, I had the idea to make a movie about how do I set this up it's hmm. the true story of Ireland's only ever plane hijacking and um, I, I used to work in the smallest bar in Dublin and I okay. learned that the hijacker came in and drank in the bar the night before he hijacked the airplane. So Were you there? No, it was, he, he, oh. it was, it, I wasn't even alive at the time. It was, 1980, okay. it was 1981. This guy came into a bar in Dublin and uh, the next day he hijacked the plane flying from Dublin to London. And wow. His demand was that the Vatican release the third secret of Fatima. And so if anybody 
um, if anybody, well, I'm sure loads of people don't know what that is, but if you're in Portugal, actually, Fatima is a very, very big thing. If you go into any shop, yes. there's like statues of Our Lady of Fatima. Yes, 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 yes. Like the Virgin Mary. And it's interesting, the Pope is people. coming to, uh, the Pope is coming to Portugal. 500 now. meters from my house. Yeah, and the whole city's going to be closed down for about two weeks, apparently. It's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare, yeah. But um, I mean, for the believers, it's going to be amazing. But some backstory here. So uh, basically, the Virgin Mary appeared in the town of Fatima, Portugal, in the year 1918. And she gave three shepherd children three secrets. And the first two secrets were revealed. But the third secret, the third secret was so big that the Vatican were like, oh, no, nobody can... Nobody can deal with this information. And so they mm. kept it secret. And so Fatima, the town here, has became this kind of pilgrimage spot where people go and yes. get, try to get cured of cancer and things like that. Um, but uh, anyway, it's just funny. I, that's why he hijacked the airplane. He hijacked the airplane demanding that the Vatican release the third secret of Fatima. So I thought that would make a wow. very funny idea for a movie. And so I hunted down the <laughs> hijacker and I, I messaged the hijacker. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? You messaged? Yeah. Wait, so wait a minute. He was not in jail? Uh, no, he was, no, he was no longer in jail, no. Okay, so he spent... This, is, like, this was in 1981, but it, by the time you, I was learning this story, it was 2000. And... So he went to jail, and then you contact him after, but how did you get in touch with him? Like, well, what, so and, I was, and where was I, he? When I, when I heard this story... I literally heard it in the bar because I was working there, and um, and uh, I this was before YouTube and Wikipedia and stuff. So I just went online and I just looked around. I did some investigative research, hence the hat, and um, <laughs> I, uh, I I found an email address which I hoped was his email address, and I always remember I emailed him thinking that I wouldn't hear from him. And then 10 okay. minutes later, he wrote back to me in all caps. Oh. And he said, yes, that was me in the year of 1981 when I hijacked the blah, blah, blah plane. And I said, wow. to him, oh my God, I think this will make an amazing idea for a movie and I'd love to get your side of the story. And again, he wrote back to me 10 minutes later, again in all caps. And I always remember it word for word. He said to me, at last, I've waited all my life for someone like you to contact me. I know the real third secret of Fatima, which I've tried and failed to release on two separate occasions. And now I'm finally ready to reveal the third secret in your movie. And I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> I mean, and the secret died with him. Uh, well, you well, actually, have your well, answer. I, well, actually, I see somebody there in the comment section that goes, what, 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 what is the secret? Well, the you have your answer. The interesting thing is that the, 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 they actually had a ceremony in the Vatican about 10 years ago. And they mm -hmm. actually, they brought the two remaining shepherd children to the Vatican uh, who were about 105 years of age each. And they revealed the third secret of Fatima. And it was kind of un underwhelming. It was a bit of a disappointment. And what the, what the third secret predicted was, and I guess people were kind of hoping that it might, well, I guess people were expecting that it might predict the end of the world or something, but mm -hmm. it predicted that um, there was going to be an assassination attempt on the Pope, right? And okay. But here's, and the interesting, but here's the interesting thing. The guy hijacked the airplane on the 1st of May, 1981. And then on the 10th of May, 1981, the Pope was shot and almost got killed driving through Vatican City. So I'm the only person in the world that can put together those dots. And you're hearing this first through Club Shadow, or is it Shade? I Breaking heard news. nothing, Breaking I know news. nothing. Breaking news in the dark I know nothing. depths of the, the internet. <laughs> Pope, you're welcome to my hood. We are waiting for you. All good. I'll be in my house. So. So, uh, I, so, so, so I did all my research. I, I managed to meet yeah. the pilot of the airplane. I managed to meet... Uh, the pilot the, of the... Wow. The former prime minister of Ireland. And, so you were doing yeah. all these by yourself? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was all like, you know, it was, it was after I made my short film that was successful. Then I just threw myself into 
trying to write this film script. And so I did all the research, went to the library, dug up all the old newspapers, tried to hunt down everybody that I could possibly find in connection with this story. And uh, it was amazing because there was all these other interesting tangents to the story. For example, the air hostess on the airplane was a former Miss Ireland, right? <laughs> and uh, so I thought that'd be, well, that's a really interesting character. That's a movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a movie. It's a mini series, I think. It might be a Netflix mini series. Yeah, could be. So, uh, and then what, why didn't you pursue? Um, well, Cost, you know, I time? Spent, I spent, well, you know, so first of all, I wanted to make that movie, but if you think about it, it's a period piece. It's all set in 1981 and involves airplanes, <laughs> hijacking. It's, it's going to be expensive first yeah. film. It's going to probably cost, I don't know, six, seven million if you do it in a clever, yeah. cheap way. Um, And so, the, and so, writing a script that kind of hangs together as well was difficult. Um, but then one day, I, accident, I accidentally came up with an idea for a music website. Okay. Um, um, and then that ac that accidental idea ended up kind of taking over my life and dragging me in a different direction. Hmm. So, uh, and but people still say to me, "Oh, you should make that film." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, give me seven million, and I'll try." It. <laughs> <laughs> 